Attackers like to use legitimate services for sending phishing messages. It can help bypass a lot of common phishing protections and other security controls. In this video, I'm going to show how attackers in a recent string of attacks have been leveraging Microsoft Dynamics 365 to send very convincing phishing messages. Avanon recently posted a blog titled Abusing Microsoft Customer Voice to Send Phishing Links. In this blog, they detail how uh, attackers are leveraging Microsoft Dynamics 365 customer voice to send phishing links. So what is customer voice, you might ask? Well, first off, let's talk about Dynamics 365. So Dynamics 365 from Microsoft is a cloud-based business applications platform that combines components of customer relationship management, so CRM, and enterprise resource planning, ERP, along with productivity applications and artificial intelligence tools. So they have a few different services that are part of Dynamics 365. So there's a customer service, uh, there's a field service, remote assist, customer insights, and customer voice. So let's head over to customer voice, see what that's all about. So customer voice is a tool for collecting, analyzing, and tracking real-time feedback in an easy-to-use scalable feedback management solution. Um, it's a way to basically send surveys, from what I could tell. Send surveys to, uh, to your customers. So how can attackers leverage this to send phishing messages? Well, I wanted to see for myself, so I signed up for my own customer voice account. Before we try this out ourselves, let's take a look at the example that Avanon gave us in their blog post. So there's screenshots showing what these phishing messages actually look like. First up, <clears throat> the email that the user actually received comes from a Microsoft.com email address. That's the first step of this attack. That's pretty tricky, right? Most users, they see an email coming from Microsoft.com, usually aren't on high alert. So in the content of the actual message itself, it says something along the lines of, you have received a new voicemail from potential da 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 and there's a link to a new voicemail. Okay, so what happens if you click the link? The link actually is not going to some crazy, you know, custom domain. It's going to another Microsoft.com domain. So when they click the link in the email that came from Microsoft.com, it actually sends them to another Microsoft.com page where they're now presented with this page that says, hey, play, play voicemail. And if they click the play voicemail button, that's when the user is actually being redirected to an actual credential harvesting portal. So they're probably setting up something along the lines of Evil Gen X or Modlishka to do some sort of reverse proxy to capture credentials at this point. So a little bit trickier here. So let's see how hard is this to actually set up. So this is the Microsoft Dynamics 365 customer voice portal. It's fairly straightforward. There's a button here on the right that says new project. If you click that, it takes you to a list of templates. Uh, and you know, if, if you've ever done any sort of surveys or if you've ever created any surveys using any survey generation tool, uh, it's very similar to a lot of those. So it allows you to first off use templates, but you can also create a blank survey. And if you click that and then create, click create, it'll drop you in this new survey. Now this is the landing page. This is not the email that's going to be sent to the user. This is the page where after they click the link in the email, this is what they're going to be presented with. So this is where you would, you know, if you wanted to try to simulate that, uh, that fish phishing message that was in the Avanon blog post, you could say, um, you have received a new voicemail and you can start to fill out these various, um, text boxes with fishy information, you know, tricky stuff saying, Hey, here's a new voicemail. Click here, that kind of thing. So when you start to build out this landing page, you can start to add in picture elements. You can start to add in links, which is what we're going to end up doing here. We're going to say, you have one new, totally legitimate voicemail waiting. And then there's a play voicemail button. And so right now we're just going to direct the, the, the victim in this case to outlook.office365.com to try to simulate that click and then redirects to a Microsoft login page. This is where the attackers are placing their phishing links. So, so this would be where an attacker might put a link to a credential harvesting portal. We'll click OK. And then now we're going to move on to the send part. So when you click send, it should take you to a page where you can generate this email. And this is where you customize the email part. This is where you would put in the phrasing around what you want to actually be sent to the user via email and get them to click a voicemail. So in this case, we can say, please click the following link to listen to your, let's say, totally legit voicemail. And then we need to turn this into a link here so we can turn the new voicemail. We can insert a survey link right there. 
And then the survey link is what actually sends the person who clicks the link in the email to that landing page. And all it takes is to, to, uh, to send the email to a recipient. So in our recipients parameter here, I'm going to add in uh, a test user to send this email to. And then that is pretty much all we have to do here. We can move on down to the bottom here and click send. And from this point on, Microsoft Dynamics 365 Customer Voice now has our landing page. It has the phishing link in the landing page. It has the email template, and it's going to send that email to our victim. So now, whenever the victim receives that email, we'll be able to see what it actually looks like. So we have received our phishing email. If you look at the from address over here on the right, we can see that it came from surveys at email.formspro.microsoft.com. And it says that we have a new voicemail. So of course we wanna to listen to our new totally legit voicemail. If we look at the URL though, that was sent in the email, we can see that it actually directed the user to https colon slash slash ncv.microsoft.com slash a long uh, you know set of numbers and letters. Same thing um, if you click the new voicemail button, it goes to the exact same uh, URL. So let's go ahead and click that and see where it takes us. <clears throat> ah, it's our landing page. So now we're directed to another Microsoft.com URL. So this doesn't seem that malicious, right? I mean, it seems like fairly straightforward, probably something that is going to be hard for a lot of users to actually identify. Now, in this page, you know, I just kind of did a, you know, quick template here, but you can imagine getting more complicated with this, making it look a little bit more convincing, but ultimately we have a play voicemail button. And for this specific test case, I just have it directed towards outlook.office365.com. This is where the attacker might try to fish with a credential harvesting portal though. So let's go ahead and click that. And it does take us in fact to Outlook. If that had been a phishing link to a credential harvesting portal, it might prompt the user to log in and steal their credentials. So what can you do to protect against this? The easy answer would be to block Microsoft Dynamics 365 URLs, such as the ones sent in the survey emails. But blocking Microsoft services is usually not ideal for most companies. The other thing is most email gateways are probably not gonna be blocking Microsoft emails anytime soon. Additionally, out of band phishing has been something that's been rising and things like smishing where attackers are sending SMS messages with malicious links gets around a lot of the common security protections. So it's, it's starting to come more down to security awareness training and teaching users not just to look at links and emails anymore, um, but also be aware of malicious URLs anywhere they go on their phone, um, on the web even. And you know, one other thing in the case of credential harvesting portals, uh, specifically for the Microsoft 365 side, like was demonstrated in this attack, uh, things like conditional access policies that lock down certain IP ranges uh, might actually assist in preventing those external um, attacker servers from being able to authenticate if they're using a proxy. So I hope you all enjoyed the video. Subscribe to be alerted whenever I post these, and I'll catch you next time.